Hello all. Uh, so I have been asking around for a video request. So this time around, I wanted the video request to come from my alumni and my subscribers. So one uh, very popular video request that I got was uh, how to come up with a use case. So all my subscribers they kept asking me, hey. you have to do one video on use case so since i'm taking inputs from my subscribers uh, from my youtube subscribers i'm going to do a video on this now so please do watch this video till the end and please do hit the subscribe button below so that there's a lot of videos posted so so that you'll get these notifications whenever i upload new videos and please do hit the like button and if you have any video request please do comment below i'll definitely make the video uh, if not today maybe in a week or something whenever i have time having said that let's go into the video and let me share my screen so what we are going to do here is we are going to reverse engineer right so the example that we are going to take is sending a friend request on facebook so this is the example that we are going to take and uh, i'm going to send out a friend request on facebook i'll show you how it's done i'm sure you all know already at some point of time you guys might have sent out a friend request in your life for sure so i'll do that and then we'll go through the use case uh, how would, how we should write it uh, that way you guys can understand how use case works and how we document a use case the reason i am taking a very simple rudimentary example is because i want every tom dick and harry to understand i don't want to take a complicated cash processing flow in bank of america i don't want to do that i don't want to uh, take a overdraft transaction and processing example from wells fargo right so we don't want to take these examples i want to take a very simple straight forward example that everybody can understand and apply right so I'm going to take this sending a friend request on Facebook example. I'm going to send out a friend request on Facebook. I'm going to show you how it's done and then we'll go through the use case. The reason why we are reverse engineering is if we go through a feature that's already present and then document it, then we'll understand how it works, right? If you are especially if you are new. So, let's go Facebook and let me type a random name and a very uh, a random name that comes to my mind is Tim Jones. Now I'm going to hit people. and i'm going to hit uh, and then if i don't find the tim jones in here i'll filter based on the city i'll just filter based on new jersey and oh this is the tim jones that we are looking for i'll click on the tim jones here and then i'll click on the add friend button but i'm not going to do so because it's very weird to send out a friend request to somebody that we don't know but then you just imagine that i'm click i'm clicking this button right and the friend request is going so let's imagine that in our head and let's let me not actually send out a, a <laughs> friend request having said that so we, i'll be clicking this button uh, and then the friend request is sent now this is the scenario that we are going to take into account now let's go through the use case right so use case name first you need to write the use case name which is sending a friend request on facebook next one is who are all the actors all the entities who are involved will come under act, uh, actors the user of course you you are a actor next is facebook right so which is an application that's an actor next is if the, there there will be some cases where there will be more than one actor so next is description the use case describes the steps involved in sending a friend request to another user on the facebook platform right so this is a very brief description of what we are documenting and it uh, it says this use case describes steps involved in sending a friend request to another user in the facebook platform right so next is preconditions so precondition meaning um what should the user have before performing this action that's a precondition or preconditions in this case the user must have a active facebook account the user must be logged into the facebook the user knows the name or email address of the person they want to send a friend request to right so this is another precondition because if they don't know then you have to do that search and this flow will be much more detailed so for whatever reason we are just taking into this uh, taking this third precondition where the user knows the email address or the name of the person they want to send the friend request to so that's the precondition right so if the user is going to have these three elements covered then they can go ahead and perform the action um, so without a facebook account they can't 
even send out a friend request so the preconditions are not met if the user is not logged into facebook of course they cannot uh, send out a friend request the precondition is not met if the user doesn't know the name of the person they want to send a friend request to i just met somebody in the coffee shop i just met somebody in the office in the office um my colleague and i don't know the name for whatever reason then uh i cannot send out the friend request right so then because i don't know the name of course so you need the user must know the name okay so next is the basic flow meaning happy path right uh the user opens the facebook website or mobile application and logs into their account which we did uh the user navigates to the search bar located at the top of the page or screen this search bar is what it's talking about right next the user enters the name or email address of the person they want to send a friend request to in the search bar and in this case we click tim jones and hit enter next facebook displays a list of search results based on the entered name or email address which it did you can see based on the name it's pulling up different pull it's pulling up pages it's pulling up post it's pulling up just about anything uh and uh, yeah it's pulling all these things up so one more point that i liked is the user filters the results based on people which is i'll go click on people right and number 6 the user identifies the correct person from the search results so i'll go this is our team tim jones that we are looking for from penn state uh, so this will 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 click on tim tim's profile and then the user clicks on the profile of the person they want to add as a friend to view their profile page which we are doing right now we clicked on it and we are viewing this person's profile page and he has a, he has a bunch of friends in here and so on this one like to this photo um and Facebook displays the profile page of the selected person which the user clicks on the add friend button usually located below the profile picture on the prof- on, or or on the profile page so this add friend button is clicked add friend button is clicked so this is this point is talking about the case where once we click on the add friend button especially in the case where there are no mutual friends um uh, facebook would, uh, would 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 display a dialog box saying that hey there's no mutual friends are you sure you want to send this friend request out to tim jones in that case if we click on yes or send we kind of override that notification uh, the uh, 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 message box and then the friend request gets sent out to tim jones in the case where we click on uh, no uh, then we don't that that request doesn't go through so that's what uh the points 10 and 11 talk about and that happens only in the case where there are no mutual friends and it applies to this specific case too because i don't have any mutual friends with them so next up is facebook processes the friend request and sends a notification to the person on the receiving end so tim gets the uh, friend request if the person receiving accepts the friend request the user becomes friends with them on facebook So this goes without saying and without any explanation or saying. So this is the basic flow. Now next up is alternate flow, right? If the user is already friends with the person they are trying to add, Facebook may display a message indicating the existing friendship status and prevent sending a duplicate friend request. So if they are already friends, you cannot send out a friend request to somebody with who you are already friends. right if you are already friends on facebook you can't send out a friend request to that person so this again this is an alternate flow right 
so this is not possible and since it's not possible facebook will display a message indicating the existing friendship status so this is one alternate flow if the user's friend request is rejected or ignored by the receiving person then add friend button will no longer be visible so this is another uh, alternate flow so these are the two alternate flows so if the user's friend request is rejected or ignored by the receiving person then the add friend button will no longer be visible so in the case where the user uh, gets this uh facebook uh, uh this friend request and then tim rejects our friend request uh then when we again go back to tim's profile we will not be able to see this add friend button i'm sure that that's happened to everybody at some point so um so this is another alternate flow so uh these are the two alternate flows so alternate flow is nothing but uh it's not happy path it is a flow that doesn't follow the happy path so that is the alternate flow uh, or hypothetical scenario might be a very strong term to use but you know uh, a flow that's not happy path or that deviates from the happy path would be an alternate flow that needs to be documented in the um, use case as well next is post conditions the user has sent a friend request to another person on facebook so once we send out a friend request it is sent to another person on facebook then receiving person has received a notification about the friend request so tim has received the friend request so post condition is nothing but so once we do this activity or once we exercise this feature what is the end result once we've exercised the feature what is the end result is the post condition or post conditions and there are some exceptions to this uh, flow if the user's facebook account is temporarily or permanently suspended the friend request feature may not be accessible that's an exception so you cannot use this feature if the user's internet connection is unstable or unavailable they may not be able to send a friend request until connection is restored this is another an exception when it comes to using this feature or this flow so next is business rules the user can send a friend request to any person who has not blocked them on facebook so if somebody has blocked you for whatever reason you cannot exercise this feature the user can send a friend request to maximum of 5000 people so there is that upper limit that facebook has set up the user can cancel a friend request before it is accepted or rejected by the receiving person that we can do right we can send out a friend request and within a couple of seconds we can cancel it the user can only send a friend request to a person who has not reached the friend request limit which is 5000 or blocked friend requests altogether so there are these people who blocked uh, who blocked other people from sending friend requests which is kind of interesting um because the primary reason to be on facebook is to make friends but then there is this wonderful sect or group of people who uh, uh, uh just block block people from sending out friend requests so so you can't send it to them um and there are there are these people who accept all the request and then if it reaches 5000 you you they cannot accept request so you cannot send them the friend request too. so next is notes uh the specific user interface elements such as buttons labels page layouts may vary based on the version of facebook and the platform web or mobile being used so the touch and feel of this feature when it comes to uh, a web browser and mobile phone browser or app will vary will be different so that is included in the notes segment and other elements like this can be uh, included in the notes element as well so just to recap use case documentation when it comes to use case documentation we start with the use case name then there's the actors all the entities involved then there is a brief description of that feature next pre condition uh, which talks about what the user must have in order to exercise this feature next is the basic flow or the happy path next is the alternate flow uh, which deviates from the happy path and next one is the post conditions what happens once we exercise once we've exercised this feature next is exceptions so there are some exceptions when it comes to using this feature what are they next is business rules there are some business logic coded into this feature um and uh, then there are some business rules when this feature interacts with uh, uh the application and 
uh, other people's profile so that's included in the uh, uh, business so more or less it looks like uh, uh, it seems like the, these are uh, some limitations uh, of this uh, feature and intended limitations uh, of this feature so that comes under uh, business rules and next is the notes uh, so which is kind of indicating that the web version and the mobile app version looks different so this is how a use case is documented hope you have learned something of essence from this a very short uh, video on use case how to document a use case and uh, please do subscribe to my channel below and hit the like button and if you have any questions do comment below if you have something to add please do comment below so thank you all and you all have a wonderful day bye